talking to a human I can depend on to bring me happy. Again, Trekkies, both here on Earth and back on XO3, where I hear our show is gaining quite a following, Lou. Wow. I'm Brian Kreutz, as always, joined by my great co-host, Lily Fox Loom. Oh, thank you, Brian. And as our recent guest, Mark Okrand, would say, Chebej <laughs> Mohrelop. <laughs> yes, what a treat it was to have Mark Okrand, the creator of the Klingon language, as our special guest back on episode six here on a captain's log. Now, hopefully it got many of you to start brushing up on your Klingon skills. Ooh, yes. Well, I know of at least one person, or I guess I should say one entity, who did start studying Klingon because of that great interview. And it's time to beam him up right now. <laughs> Pit, cha, 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 no. I'm sure that we can arrange that, Raj. And it's great to hear that your Klingon is progressing so fast. Yes. Thanks for trying to speak the language of Klingon warriors. I'm already past the second checkpoint on Duolingo! Well, Raj, we're very proud of your diligence in taking on such a tough language and learning to speak it so quickly. Mm -hmm. Lily, you said you were going to beam me up? Did you know that the phrase beam me up Scotty was never spoken in the original series? Why, yes, I did know that, Raj. That's a little-known piece of trivia right there. Yes, when I meet someone who knows that, I know I'm talking to a super Star Trek fan like the people in our audience here yeah. on Captain's Log. <laughs> <laughs> I bet if the Nielsen ratings counted XO3, the original series would never have been canceled. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, that's an interesting topic. We may never have had all the spinoff shows like Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, you know, all of them. If the original series was longer or had never been canceled back in 1969, mm -hmm. I do know Gene Roddenberry had a holodeck on Kirk's Enterprise planned for season four, and Harry Mudd would have returned. Wow. I read this. Yeah. Now, Raj, we have a viewer question for you. It comes to us from Phil Packer in Boulder, Colorado. He writes, Dear Raj, you do a great job as co-co-host, but I've noticed that you wear the same clothes in every episode. <laughs> Are those the only clothes you have? And if so, is that very sanitary? Your fan, Phil. P.S. I tried cocoa in a glass, and you're right. It tastes just fine that way. <laughs> <laughs> really? You know, I don't think I've tried cocoa in a glass. Come to think of it, we mention it almost every week. Or... We do. <laughs> well, Phil, my closet is filled with thousands of copies of this outfit. In fact, I have a hard time every day deciding which one to wear. Raj, your costume is reminiscent to that of your father, Dr. Roger Corby. Much ka shake. Well, Raj, while you're organizing your clothes on your console viewer virtual closet, let's move on to a few other topics. First of all, we hope you will all visit our Instagram page at a captain's log show with underscores and see us there. In addition, a captain's log now airs on 12 stations across the country in addition to Roku. Thank you so much, Trekkies, for helping the series grow so fast, and we hope that this is just the beginning. Yes, definitely. And with all the TV series, movies, cartoons, books, toys, and so much more that have piled up in the Star Trek universe for a whopping 55 years now, we could easily go on for decades, filling up hundreds of episodes. There's always lots to talk about with Star Trek related things like the Lower Deck Season 2 premiere. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Did you see Thursday's episode on Paramount Plus? Wow, Boyms is back, but really only as a holodeck character in scene one. And then he's on the con at Riker's Titan. Oh yeah, I like the Gary Mitchell visual <laughs> nod plus the boulder that killed him reference from Dr. Tana. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. You know, it was great to see Gary Mitchell. So he and now First Officer Jack Ransom, voiced by Jerry O'Connell, are now both known for being power hungry, larger than godlike creatures who get their shorted out powers of their godliness taken away from them. Yeah, season two of Lower Decks has a lot for us to look forward to for the next nine episodes after this season premiere. Every Thursday on Paramount Plus, Woo, there's a lot of current Star Trek news to report this week. And that brings us to our interview guest for this week. So far in the brief existence of this show, we've already had a 
very special batch of guests, people who've contributed to the Star Trek universe in a wide variety of ways. But this week, it's great to have a Star Trek actor for the very first time. He's one of the most prolific TV actors of the last two generations. That's right. You know, in the 70s, he appeared on such classic shows as Eight is Enough, Starsky and Hutch, I remember that one, and The Incredible Hawk. In 1995, he made his Star Trek debut playing an Ocampan community leader named Tannis in an episode of Star Trek Voyager titled Cold Fire. Now, his best known role in the series came six years later in the series Lily's watching right now, Star Trek Enterprise playing the Vulcan Saval. He's an ambassador to Earth. Now he played that character in a whole dozen episodes on Star Trek Enterprise for all four seasons. And we're hoping he can later reprise his role I'm hoping to ask him about that in this interview. I gotta ask him that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would role, love right? to see Soval again. Yes. Uh, Gary Graham has more than a hundred acting credits on IMDb, oh. and he's also a musician and a contributor to Breitbart News. And now he's with us here on a captain's log. Gary Graham, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my pleasure, my friend. My pleasure. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to win the big prize. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> nail these suckers. <laughs> Gary, your father was a medical doctor and you attended college planning on following him into that field. So what made you decide to go into acting instead? I had been busting my butt in pre-med and uh, wearing myself out preparing for midterms and finals and all that. And uh, I realized that soon I would have to be applying to medical school. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I, you know, hedged every bet and uh, they, they require that you uh, you pick electives, not in your chosen field, your major field, uh, other things like humanities or arts or, uh, or, or or philosophy or something. So I was I was combing through. This is my sophomore. No, it was my junior year, and I was combing through uh, the, uh, the, the the courses of you know which were available to me. And I thought, mm, pottery, I don't think so. Let's see, art, eh, I've never really drawn. Uh, and I came across acting. I go, acting? Acting is a class? Oh, okay, it has to be a class. So I said, gee, that sounds like fun. Sounds like fun and games. And it, more than that, it sounded like an easy A. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to go for the easy A because I've been busting my balls to, to, get, uh, to get my grades up there. And... Uh, I jumped into this class not knowing beans about acting, and I, I, uh, I found it just delightful and a way to uh, sort of overcome my shyness. I was uh, People don't believe that when I say, you know, I'm an actor and all that. They say, you were shy? I said, yes, painfully so. And uh, I thought, well, I, I could probably uh, stand to loosen up a little bit, get on stage and see what happens. And so I rolled the dice. And uh, I, I, it turns out it, it, it came easily to me because I, because oddly enough, being up on stage in front of everybody and pretending that there nobody, there, there's nobody looking at me seemed to be uh, very easy for me and a wonderful way to escape my shyness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's weird. Uh, it seems a strange way to hide by placing yourself under a microscope, which was basically what it was. But it was, uh, I found it cathartic and healing at the same time. <laughs> so, so I just started doing plays and was asked to do student films, and I just jumped in it with a with with a gusto. And I I, I just found it just fascinating and so different from the pre-med uh, regimen of, 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 you know, chemistry and biology and physics and, uh, and uh, all these disciplines that were uh, sort of, uh, well, they just were really hardcore and, and it was very difficult, but I did well with them. Uh, I just, uh, it just was such pressure. And I looked at acting like just a wonderful release from all of that. So I got my easy A um, and helped my GPA. And about the time it, it came down to it's time to apply to medical school. Uh, I was doing uh, several student films and was in a play, and I finally just I finally just uh, went to my dad and I said, "You know, Dad, hold your brace yourself. <laughs> this is not easy to say, but I'm going to switch majors and become an acting major, and uh, and go up to Hollywood and uh, work in films." 
seeing that you grew up in Southern California, I'm wondering, do you think you would have been as likely to go into acting had you not been from Southern California? Or, or really, what were the early motivations for you to begin acting? No, never, never gave it a thought in the world, uh, other than the fact that when I, my mother and I had a, a thing, we, we liked uh, old black and white movies, mm -hmm. and we were both night owls, so everybody had, would be in, in, in asleep in bed, and my mom and I would uh, watch old movies, you know, old, old uh, Claude Rains movies or uh, Humphrey Bogart or something, and we made a, we used to make a game, try to guess. Try to guess the obscure character actor, his, his name. And I usually won. I, for some reason, I retained their names. Um, uh, Sydney Greenstreet. Uh, you know, we, I, I would know this level of, of character actors. And we would just quiz each other sometimes, and just, just as a game. Um, never thinking that, uh, and this is even before I was taking acting classes. Um, but I got into it and got some... Uh, Pretty soon, I got some some uh, some affirmation from from students and from teachers and like like you you're not you're not an acting major. And I said no, I'm pre med. And he says, well, you you're pretty good at this. You and you, you you haven't done this before. I go no, I just sort of figure I just trip on through and discover it as we went, <laughs> which <laughs> is actually the my life story. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> how I ended up in Star Trek and a, with a film career. That's I just. I just tripped through it and uh, just assumed that I would figure it out when I, when, I, uh, when I came to it. A Captain's Log with special guest Gary Graham returns in a moment. Gary Graham, it has been a true delight having you here on A Captain's Log. Alien Nation was a well-received show that was canceled after just one season because of financial problems with Fox, which at the time was still early in its existence. Was the cancellation a shock to you, or did you see it coming? I know this series and lead role had to be near and dear to your heart, Gary. It was no more a shock than, uh, say, a UPS guy arriving at your doorstep with a package, mm -hmm. and, and, the, and he says, Gary Graham, and, and, and I say yes, and he puts the package down, and then with great force kicks you in the nads. <laughs> That's about the kind of shock that I, I I I got when I got the call about we we're canceled. Okay. It was it was about as stunning and about as painful, and uh, I I because I, I was absolutely positive, hundred percent positive we were going to get picked up. Mm -hmm. They had uh, all the signs were there. They 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 had called the the. Uh, the wardrobe uh, people had uh, ordered new sh new sewing machines to keep up with the obvious costuming that we're going to have to go into. They had uh, renewed the lease on the building that we were shooting in uh, for our show. They had uh, uh, Fox Publicity had called me uh, that morning to make my plane reservations, fly back to New York, and meet the affiliates for the upcoming season. Uh, the wardrobe guy who uh, took care of my clothes, he. Uh, he said, "Listen, we're we're breaking down for the season. Who knows if we're going to be back? But you want to you want to keep one of these? I had three uh, leather jackets, which are the Matt Sykes jackets. I had three of them. He said, you want to keep one of these? I go, nah. You hang on to them. I'll, I'll be back in the fall. All right? He goes, all right. We're going again. And um, that's how confident I was. And now I'm I'm kicking myself because I, I wish I had that jacket again. <laughs> um, but anyway, it was it was a huge shock, huge shock." Now, it wouldn't be overlooked that prior to your Star Trek debut as Tannis in the episode Cold Fire in Star Trek Voyager, you were a finalist not only for the role of Captain Janeway, when it was a male role on that series, but also two years earlier for the role of Captain Sisko. You auditioned for this on Deep Space Nine. Now, prior to those auditions, had you been a big Star Trek fan? Tell us about auditioning for the Captain roles and getting into the role of Tannis on Voyager, Gary. Uh, I was uh, one of three or four, I think one of three, wow. being considered for both roles, um, you know, a, a couple of years apart. But, uh, yeah, I heard, uh, I heard that. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Tell us about first getting the role of Ambassador Soval. You played the most popular Vulcan ambassador aside from Sarek, Spock's father, but you've appeared in more Star Trek productions as Soval. Uh, get uh, to go in and read for, uh, for uh, Soval. Mm -hmm. and, and nail Saval, because uh, I, 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 when they said come in and read for us, I said, you know, 
I have read for Star Trek about nine or ten times already. What what you know? What can I read? In, can I have a do it with a Chinese accent? Maybe that would do something. <laughs> something different. Uh, I I didn't know what they wanted, but I I just took a wild stab at it, mm-hmm. and I, I be honestly. I didn't understand uh, who the Vulcans were. I didn't know their history. I, I, I'd, I, I watched Star Trek as a kid. I kind of grew up with it, but I wasn't ab- an avid, rabid fan. Uh, I didn't know all the uh, Trekology uh, going into it. So I just went and took a stab, and they said, you got the role. And so I go, oh, great. So then I, showed up on, I show up to film the pilot. I wasn't hired for any more than just the pilot on Enterprise. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking, okay, I'm in costume, I'm in makeup. Uh, I walk onto the set. We've got 15 minutes before we're, we're called to set to uh, start rehearsing and shooting the, the, the first scene that I'm in there. And it's the introductory scene. It's an early scene uh, in, in, the, in the play. And, and Archer is, uh, is, is kind of confronting me as, as uh, you know, it, it, it appears that I'm being a stick in the mud an impediment to what Archer wants to do and uh, with little respect or trust or, or, or liking for the humans. And so I thought, well, gosh. And I, I bumped into Rick Berman on the way to the set and he says, well, you look like a Vulcan. And I say, Rick, come here. Cause I'm not sure I feel like a Vulcan. Cause who am I anyway? What, what are the Vulcans all about? I, I probably should have, got to you a little earlier with this question but tell me about the vulcans please we got 15 minutes and i i but i work fast so just don't he goes oh my holy god uh he just put an arm around me and walked me once around the uh, sound stage outside and told me about the history of the vulcans and how far uh, far being uh uh far from being uh creatures that have no emotions they have volcanic emotions. They have mercurial <laughs> tendencies. They would have to learn to curb those instincts and um, mollify it and peaceful way uh, of logic and, and solving differences um, intellectually. And I uh, say, oh, man, that is such a, <laughs> such a better thing and more fun and more dynamic thing to play than what I had in mind. Uh, so thank you for that. And uh, oh, state places... Oh, <laughs> nice chatting with you, Rick. Now I gotta go be the Vulcan. So it happened that fast, <laughs> and and uh, wow, uh, you get whiplash when you. When, but many times in in making movies and television, you have to you have to turn on a dime like that. So I did, and it seemed to work. And I thought, <clears throat> I thought, you know, I like this guy. I like Saval, and I really would love to. I, we're again, again, we are only hired for the pilot. We hadn't been picked up or anything, so it was just a one-off thing, as far as I knew. And I thought, I really want to come back. And the way I come back is I make myself a formidable foe for Archer, a foil to play off of. I want to be such a... So I may intentionally said, hmm, I'm going to be snotty and snooty and condescending and just get under his skin and... And just stop them at every turn. And then the, the writers will pick up on it, and I'll be asked back, which is exactly what happened. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> they brought me back. I said, yes, <laughs> yes. So what was your experience like on Star Trek Enterprise, especially preparing and then doing a mind meld? I went to the producers and the director, and I asked them about him. And they showed me. I said, do one on me. Let me see where your hands are placed and all that. So they did. And I went, I, I tried it out. And I uh, used some of my imagination. Maybe maybe Saval has a slightly different technique. You know, like I, I figure, okay, I'm going to make this. This is where I'm, Gary makes it in, his own. So I just position the hands such that, uh, upgrade it. okay. Yeah, yeah I, I, I just... I placed it there. I wanted to. I want to get real psychic and, and physical about it, and and uh, I don't know. I can't even remember what I did. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen the episode in a long time, but I think it came off pretty well. It's such an honor to be able to do stuff like that, you know, with such a, a time honored uh, a franchise as, as Star Trek. It it seemed to work. The writers the writers picked up on it, 
and throughout the arc of the th- the four years, they uh, they gave me some really really cool things to do. But little I could I could sense in their writing they wanted they 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 were leading the change the change to to accepting and respecting and even liking and loving um, like Vaughn Armstrong's character for instance we came we became buddies and trusted comrades really and working together and and uh, learning a lot about each other's respective uh, species by hanging out and, and talking and finally getting blown up together um so that was that was that was a true joy to do a captain's log with special guest gary graham returns in a moment our writer producer and the voice of our captain lex zorn was very excited when he learned that you were going to be our interview guest this week on a captain's log He's also an Indiana high school football commentator, and you have a big role in his all-time favorite high school football movie, All the Right Moves. He said that he loves the movie particularly because of its accurate portrayal of big-time high school football and its importance in small towns, and the way that the two Georgievic brothers and their father look out for and support each other. Please tell us about your experience with this film. Uh, the director's looking around, uh, looking around. Uh, I th- I thought you were delivering something or something. <laughs> he thought I was there to deliver something. Go, uh, no, sir. I'm reading for uh, for Greg and uh, Greg Georgievich, and uh, he goes, "Holy moly! I thought you were uh, well. That's perfect. You, you look you look the part. So uh, here, <laughs> just no. I had to read for it, and uh, it it went real well. Uh, I got hired and uh, showed up uh, uh, in in just outside of Pittsburgh. And uh, uh, they had been filming for a few weeks doing football scenes and all that. And the weather was miserable in February and, and uh, just outside Altoona. Or, and uh, and uh, I met Craig T. Nelson and uh, Tom Cruise. And uh, we just hit it off, all of us, and uh, we went to work. And, gosh, it was, just a, it was just a great experience, really. Great experience all the way around. It is plausible that the Soval character could still be alive in the new Star Trek Strange New World series prequel coming up. Now, this is set after Enterprise about 10 years before Kirk. Now, Archer is rumored to return Scott Bakula. Would you be willing to play Vulcan Ambassador Soval again as a reprisal of the role, Gary? Well, I'd have to think about it for about a microsecond. Of course! <laughs> of course! I love everything about Star Trek. I love Enterprise. I love Scott Bakula. He's he's a great guy to work with. Just a fantastic uh, lead in any series. You know, a lot of series. Sometimes you don't you don't get you get stars that are just it's all about them. And they, but but Scott Bakula is is one of the e- most easygoing yet hardworking and um, all-inclusive kind of guy he just includes us all and uh, he just he never gets a case of the specials he's always about the the work the project uh and making you as a guest actor feel welcome and feel you know feel uh, a part of the the family and uh i i couldn't have, couldn't have asked for a better captain on on a show than than scott bacula he's he's just He's a terrific actor and, and just a, a really nice guy. Gary, you also have a book for us actors called Acting and Other Flying Lessons. Please give us some details and tell us where viewers can go to buy your book. It's about what I discovered with my early attempts, my early ill-fated attempts at acting, um, my failures, my uh, triumphs, um, soaring one minute and then going down in flames the next minute. and. Uh, and how to how to look at it without getting too discouraged so that you want to quit. It's such a treat having you for this half hour on our TV show. Thank you so much for joining us, Gary. I know Lily and I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. Take care, you guys. Hello, happy, my old friend. I'm glad you've manifested yourself. To a human I can depend on to bring me happy.